Hello. The purpose of this video is to tell you about demonstrating proof of possession, DPOP, which is a feature of OpenID Connect. And to tell you all about it, I'm going to use the Axian OIDC client library to demonstrate it. So what is DPOP? Basically what happens is that when you go to authenticate, you pair up, you'll retrieve two sets of keys, an access token and a refresh token. In fact, you have these tokens in your browser accessible from the client JavaScript. And the problem is that if a hacker steals them, he'll be able to do whatever he wants and he'll be able to regenerate himself new access tokens, refresh tokens for a long time, which means he'll be able to do nefarious things for a long time. And that's a real problem. With Depop, what happens is that when you go to pair up, you'll generate a private key, which will enable you to, how shall I put it, on the web browser side, generate a private key that cannot be exported. It uses the web crypto library. And basically, you'll be able to sign a new token that you've generated. So you'll be able to sign messages and send this new token, which means that you'll be the only one able to sign messages. And then the public key will be shared, for example. Uh, with the server to which you're going to send the requests and it will be able to check that the signature is valid, that it really comes from you. And thanks to this, your tokens can only be used in your browser and not elsewhere, i.e. a hacker who can steal both sets of keys. This means that a hacker who can steal both sets of keys won't be able to generate the signature and therefore won't be able to use the tokens. So this increases the level of security by a lot. So here we go for a little demo. This is the OIDC client GitHub page. If I go down to the if I go down to the documentation level, we'll see that we're talking about Depop and we're going to do the demo directly with the React demo, which is the most advanced. So I'm going to open the debugger here uh, on the network tab. There's a multi-auth page here, which allows us to demonstrate a wide range of use cases. And here we can see that there's a config with Depop. That's it. So what happens is I've recovered it. I'd already logged in with my authentication server, so I didn't have to re-enter my login and password. But if I'd logged out completely, I wouldn't have had to re-enter my login and password. Logged out completely. So I didn't have to re-enter my login password, but if I'd gotten completely unstuck, I'd have had to. So I went back to my login password screen, hop, and now I'm logged in. And then I get my key sets back and so on. So what happens is that for the Depop to work, I need to retrieve the access token on the JavaScript side. So I've configured my library so that the access token goes up on the client side. And what happens is, So let's take a look at the network part. Here's the call to retrieve the refresh token access token. Here it is. So I've retrieved my tokens. There's one thing that's changed, and that's that the token type here is a Depop. That's it. Why is that? Because when I made the request to recover my set of keys, what did I send? I sent a new HTTP header. here Depop, which is simply a JWT. If I copy this JWT, I go to JWTIO. That's it. Paste it here. You can see that I have information that I made an HTTP post on this route. And that the signature here, which was my token, was signed by a private key. Uh, we can check that it has indeed been signed, knowing that here is the information with the public key that will allow us to validate that I have indeed signed my message. 
with uh, my private key. That's all. So this will allow the server to add a layer of security layer of security. And underneath here, you can see a uh, little user information box, which is in error. I think it's related because Identity Server has a bug on their side. They didn't activate Depop on this route. And what happens is, uh, imagine I'm going to call my API now to get some information. You have to send two tokens. We'll have to send, as before, access token, the classic token. So here in authorization, we'll find our access token, which is the one we retrieved at the very beginning. And each time, we'll send the second token, the DPOP, which is the same, contains inside the... This will enable the server receiving the request, usually your API, to check the two tokens the access token, as usual, plus the DPOP. And validate with the public key that the signature is valid. And by doing this validation, we can be sure that only the JavaScript client that was the source of the login pairing is the one and only person who sent this message, thus ensuring that it wasn't a hacker who took the key and sent it to you to do malicious things. That's about it for this presentation. I'd like to thank you, and please don't hesitate to activate it and play around with it, because I think it's going to make your APIs a lot more secure. Thank you, and see you soon.